McGarren Flack here. Have you ever wondered how to make oil paint? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. We'll go over safety equipment, the tools that you'll need to be able to successfully do it. I'll demonstrate how to do it and then how to put it into a tube. It's all here, learning how to make some oil paint. So let's get into it. Safety first. You'll need some gloves to be able to protect your cuticles and hands from the pigment that's gonna go all over your hands when you're making your own paint. You will need a particulate mask. This is an N95. You don't necessarily have to have something that intense, but something to prevent the particles or pigment from going into your lungs because having lungs is kind of important to be able to breathe. So protect them. You also need a empty paint tube. This is nice. It has a little adhesive that's on the inside so that when you crimp it, it seals it off from oxygen and will not cure your oil paints inside the tube. So that's nice to have. And also a palette knife. You'll need a palette knife to be able to mix your pigment and oil together. Paper towels also to be able to clean up all of your surfaces and everything, including your paint tubes, once you're done. Linseed oil is what you're also going to need. You could use other oil like a walnut oil or safflower oil. And this is not the video to talk about that, but uh, I use linseed oil because it cures faster than walnut oil. You will also need your pigment. This is stack lead white pigment. It's stuff that I love. Um, I make it myself. You're welcome to watch some other videos on how to make your own lead white. I think I have some videos on Instagram, possibly post something here on YouTube. Things that you don't necessarily have to have, but will make your life a lot easier is this molar and a glass surface. The molar and glass surface are both frosted. You can tell there's a little frosting that's on the edge there versus the high gloss on the edge. The reason why they both need to be frosted is because the frosting acts as teeth. And when you have pigment and oil there, you need to have those teeth divide up and separate the pigments. So if your pigment particles are like this, the teeth are gonna separate it so that oil can flow in between your pigments and that will provide a much nicer paint film to use. Again, you do not have to have these. You can just use a palette knife. They do run about $200 if you buy them, which is worth the investment if you're going to be making pigment for a long period of time. Now that we've gone over all the supplies, let's do the fun stuff and make some paint. First, you wanna put the pigment on your glass surface and make a volcano shape in the center so that you can pour the oil in that little volcano hole area. Then you take your palette knife and you start to pull the pigment in with the oil and mix it around. You keep pouring oil into it. Now, if you wanna be really technical, lead white, you put 50% oil with 50% of your pigment. Certain pigments require more oil, other pigments require less oil. You just have to make your own stuff to determine how much you'll actually need. After you have it all mixed together and it's kind of cottage cheese-like, then you can start to use the molar because that means that most of the oil has attached itself to the pigment and it won't become airborne if you're actually starting to mix with it. And you can see here how I slow it down in real time. This technically took me 30 minutes to be able to make, which is not much. I was able to fill 350 milliliter tubes. There's no real rhyme or reason for uh, twisting it, pushing it, pulling it. You can go top down, left, right, in circles. A lot of paint makers will do figure eight. I just, push it around as much as I possibly can to try to mix it in. When it starts off and it's kind of in that cottage cheese looking phase, uh, really clumpy, when you are scraping it with the glass molar, some of the pigment gets stuck on the glass and you want to pull that across so that the oil can get inside or in between the pigment particles. Once you feel like you've mixed it well enough in the center, you just take your palette knife and scrape the outside in towards the middle and do it again. You wanna to continue to pull from the outside into the middle and push the molar around in multiple different directions so that you can disperse that oil into the pigment evenly. You'll notice, especially with lead white, that the more you mull it, the more wet the paint will actually become because it's getting more evenly dispersed. And once it gets to that point, um, if it gets too thin, and how do you know if it's too thin? It's when you pick it up with your palette knife and it like slops off.
then you need to add more pigment like I just did right there. So it starts off pretty dry again because the oil hasn't gotten into that pigment, but I keep scraping it from the outside, pulling it in, and mulling it around. It's just the same type of process, and it does take a good amount of work because sometimes the paint can get sticky on that molar. So after you feel like you've gotten a good consistency, then you just scoop it all up together into the center, test it out. If you lift it up, you can see there it's relatively smooth. There are a couple little bumps in there, but it is not falling off the palette knife. So I know that there's a good consistency to it. It's not too wet, and it's not too dry that it's... Uh, pasty like. Now to tube this stuff. Make sure that you have a good little tube. I get a paper towel, wrap it around my fingers, stick it inside the hole, and then make a little flap so I can hold the paper towels with my fingers on the outside. That makes it so that the paint doesn't touch the adhesive that's on the inside of the paint tube. And you just scoop it up with the palette knife, put it in there, and you lightly tap the top of it so that air bubbles come out of the paint as you put more and more paint in there. So it will level down to the tip of the paint tube. And you got to make sure that you get all of that oxygen out of there because oxygen makes the paint film cure and um, you don't want it to cure because you want to be able to use it to paint with. So here I filled it. You can see that I don't have very much paint on the adhesive. And all I'm going to do now is crimp it. Make sure that when you fill the tube that it does not um, go too high. You want to have about an inch from the very bottom of the tube to where the paint is placed in there. If you fill it all the way to the top, you'll have paint go everywhere. So all you have to do is just crimp it with your hands. And then I get this nice little canvas plier. Or you could get a tube roller and put it on it, press it down, crimp it, and remove the excess paint that is on the top. Then after it's crimped, I basically just fold it on the seams, kind of like what you see here. And it's not too difficult. Fold it once, and then fold it twice, and you'll be able to see that the paint will stay in there. And then I use a tube ringer to be able to get the rest out. Um, I usually don't have a problem with the paint coming out the bottom once I've done that. So beyond that, I will do another tube here and crimp it just for your visual enjoyment. But remember the best way to make your own oil paint is just to do it. You'll learn through experience how much oil you need to put in or how much pigment you need to put in and how it feels for your liking. So I hope that this info is good for you. and. Please leave a comment below if you think this blows chunks or if you think it was very informative. Either way, have a great day and happy painting.